what, what do you call it? The upset of the century. <laughs> Well, that's, well, well, of the half a century, I suppose you said they've been in power 50 years, no? Well, the family, mm -hmm. comes first his father, mm -hmm. he got elected into the Senate, I know, in the, the 60s. The, the state Senate before the Congress? What, what? He was up there in Washington, D.C. in Congress. Right, 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 right. So um, it is almost like you know, to me, you know how some people say they were born with a silver spoon. Yes, I've heard about that. So he was actually born with a silver spoon. And sometimes those people don't think they have to work for what they get something. Mm, 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 mm. And uh, it was handed down to him. Because a lot of he had a lot of support, a lot of backing. And I was one of them. I supported him. But did I keep up with the reality of what was going on? That's what we fail at. And yeah, what he was doing. And yeah. what he was doing because of his name and thinking that they're going to, quote, do the right thing. But you're, talking not, about, you're talking about the son now. Yeah, the son. Mm -hmm. Well, the father, too. I supported him a long way because, for one thing, he was the only black that I knew. Mm -hmm. Because he was from Missouri. And he represented the state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. But did he do all that he could do for the Blake of Missouri? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't keep up with it. Mm -hmm. I just know that I supported him because I figured if they had all those other people up there in Congress in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. He had the knowledge and education. It was up to him to keep his butt in there along with, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, at some point you got to work hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he put, <laughs> well, what, what, did you know him before he, the, the top of the father now, before he became, he, he was elected, did you, was he the first people, when he was first elected, was you here when he was first elected or he was already in Congress when you came? Because you came up from Mississippi. Yeah, but I grew up here. I came from Mississippi, but I came here when I was four years old was back in. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. But but was he he was he? That man was voted in in the in the sixties. Mm -hmm. His father. Mm -hmm. Then he led pursuit, and he just stepped in there where his father left. His father groomed him for that position. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying mm -hmm. because you know mm -hmm. what. It's just like. And these jobs and mm -hmm. and these jobs and these positions, mm -hmm. sometimes people groom their children for what they want them to be. Mm -hmm. I can say that I groomed my daughter. I was a seamstress at one point in time. My daughter, she's an excellent seamstress, and then they never took a day or someone other than what she learned from me. Mm, 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 mm. Sometimes you groom mm -hmm. your children mm -hmm. and hope that they, you know, I wanted to be a designer, not just a seamstress. I wanted to be the big time. I was thinking big. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be my name up in lights. Look at my garment. Mm -hmm. And I sold. I sold a lot. I had tried to hold on to that position for a long time. Mm -hmm. One scholarship. But then couldn't go there because when they found out the school had changed over to black, they wouldn't honor it. Mm -hmm. That was my that was my biggest problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, Clay Senior got in office in nineteen sixty. I don't know the exact date, mm -hmm. but he stayed there for years for mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Then. His son got in office in like, they say almost 20 years he been there. Wow. 20 years. So that was like about 2000. It will be in the 90s. 90s. Mm -hmm. two, well, it be 2098 or something. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I guess he failed to do what he was supposed to do. 
Well, I mean, you're you're sort of you're hanging around a community. What were people saying? Why, why, you know, what were people saying? Well, why did they kick him out? What was the scuttlebutt, as they say? What kicked him out was the new movement. Mm -hmm. The new movement is Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. He should have known Black Lives Matter because he'd been up there in Washington, D.C. The headquarters were Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was a singer mama. Yeah, a singer mom, a pastor, but I don't think all that she say is true about herself. In D time, they would tell. Mm. That's a young girl. She mm. live in my subdivision. What do you mean, your subdivision? I live in Northwoods. Mm -hmm. She live in Northwoods. Oh, yeah, that's all black area. I've been to your house. Mm -hmm. No, it, it didn't. It wasn't always a black area, and it's not completely all mm -hmm. black now. I've been in that neighborhood for 40 years. Mm. And when I first got in that night, that neighborhood, every other house was white. Mm. Every other house. I know her father. Her father was a meat cutter. Mm -hmm. Still live in Northwoods, and she live in Northwoods. Well, we have to ask you this because lineage matters, as we say. Was a, is a father a good man? Huh? It was a father. Is a, is a father a good man? Yeah, he in politics as well. What, what the, the the meat cutter? Huh? The meat cutter guy? Yeah, he 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 had retired from being a meat cutter, hmm. but uh, he's on the board of directors for my subdivision. Oh, okay. Hmm. So she has a little. She knows a little bit about. She knows her. a little bit about what's going on because her father was in politics. Uh huh. So that's a good start, no? Mm -hmm. You know how to wheel and deal and all that, thing. Well, however they say it. <laughs> In fact, if I'm not mistaken, her father was the mayor of Northwood. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, he got beaded out by Reverend Thompson. The new mayor, which mm -hmm. been the, the mayor of Northwoods for over 12 or 15 years, in which I'm on the new mayor committee. No. Are you politically connected then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what's going on. Okay. Ms. Eula know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> I was, told you I was a rebel once. <laughs> <laughs> once? What do you mean once? You the Rebel once? Rebel always? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, I don't know. Well, nobody can tell the future. But how does it look? I mean, you know, I, I know nothing's happening now. But, but how does it look? How, what, what's what's you know, what's on your mind? What's on people's mind? Uh, how, are they celebrating too much? What she do you think? had a strong backing behind her with that Black Lives Matter. That was her whole thing. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear Clay talking about Black Lives Matter. Oh, okay. Now, okay. Uh huh. Mm hmm. So you, you, and now he know that black lives does matter. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I learned about politics? Huh? I was I was hanging out in the, with the first Jesse Jackson campaign in '84 down in New York. Then, you know, we had to do some stuff. Anyway, I was hanging out with some politicians up there in Harlem. It's called the uh, J. Raymond Jones Club. You know, the good classic mm -hmm. thing where Adam Clayton Powell came out of and all that stuff, you know. And uh, there was a, uh, a politician there, Danny Farrell. He once told me, he said, you know what it is to be a politician? You see, you, see, you see where the crowd is going and you jump in front of the crowd. So obviously, Mr. Clay Jr. didn't see where the crowd was going and he didn't know how to jump in front of the crowd. That girl, a uh, Bush. Now she lost to him one time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how narrow it was because I didn't keep her with it how close. Mm -hmm. But it was narrow enough for her to come back and try the second time. Well, they say in politics, you see what happened. You can't. You're not going to win the first time. You got to keep on you going. Got to keep they, going they, at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Bush didn't. He he sat down and closed his eyes for a moment. 
Clay, Clay closes eyes. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Clay. Mm hmm. Because she's Bush. Yeah. And uh, apparently, she's a senior parent. She got two kids. Mm. And she want to be up there with the politician. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna see if they, if they turn her or if she can turn them. If you're gonna see if Black Lives still matter with her, or if, if they you know how they do. I when I got up that morning, I and I I didn't look at it that night. Mm-hmm. I got up and I said, "Wow." I saw two ads of Clay talking against her because she went as far as naming. She said, Clay been in here 20 mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. She said, 20 years. I want to have, she said, I'm a single mama. I've been in, Clay been in here 20 years. She said, I want to receive a check where I don't have to worry about my kids going down the street. Ain't nothing to change. Ain't nothing to change from Ain't nothing to change. People still struggling, especially the blacks. And when I think about how hard I work a senior parent, I had to keep myself in order, watch my daughter, protect my daughter. You work on these old jobs, they be they get mad at you. But I kept looking at the prize. I say, I'm going to be smarter than the next person. No matter who that person was. No matter who that person, I'm going to be smarter than the next person. And I was wise enough that when I did my internship and went over to VA hospital, I had a black supervisor. And sometimes you had need a little word of encouragement to get you through the rough spots. Mm. She said, I had applied for a job at VA hospital. Her name was Lois Pillar. I have no idea. I haven't seen her or know mm-hmm. where she mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. But she said, Eula, you got a sharp eye for looking in that microscope. She said, what I want you to do, she said, you got that application from VA Hospital? She said, they ain't going to hire you, but they might hire you at a grade two. She said, but I'm going to tell you right now, she said, they hiring the white as a grade five. And sure enough, she was right. Mm. When I got that, say, I was hired. I didn't even get excited, and I needed that job. Mm. My daughter was small, but they hired me as a grade two, and she had already informed me that it would take you a long time for them to lift you up. To a grade five. To a grade five. She said, no matter what, whatever is for you, it's for you. Can't nobody take that away. She said, but what you do, she said, you learn your job where you they come ask you. Mm. Mm. She said, let them come ask you. You don't need to go ask them. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's, that's really what I did. Mm. I took her advice and didn't realize. Mm. I became a specialist in that normal cell. And, and going, one girl came up when I was a supervisor at the Paul Hospital. She said, how did you get that position, she said, you didn't graduate from WashU. That's the big school college here in St. Louis, Missouri. And I said, no, I didn't. I said, but I'm licensed just like you. Mm. And I said, tell me this. How many times did you take your license? I had to take it three or four. I said, I took mine twice. And I said, when I took it the first time, I didn't like chemistry. 
Mm. I failed chemistry out of all the other subjects in med tech. I failed chemistry. And when I went back to take that test, I passed every last one of them. She felt she wanted my position just because she had went graduated from WashU. I said, I wear a pen just like you do, and I'm licensed. I said, but what I did, I started taking co- continued education classes. I went over there and took different courses. And when I sat down at that microscope, I said, oh, my God, I was sitting down at I said, oh, my God. They said, what, you? I said, here's some malignant cell. What? Let me see. Mm-hmm. Some of them graduated from the high school here in the city of St. Louis, couldn't identify a malignant cell. And my boss came and told me, he said, well, you know, before you call it, you need to take it to, I said, you don't know a malignant cell when you see it? I said, it's a malignant cell. And I said, you know what? Another thing. You the supervisor. I pulled up yesterday report, and you know what they call them? I said, this patient been in here two whole days, and they calling those cells atypical limbs. Mm. I said, name a lignin. Mm. I said, you got people up here working, depending on their lives, and they don't know an abnormal cell from a normal cell. I said, give me a break. So in other words, you you are super qualified, and that's what gets you over, not 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 where you went to or who you talked to or who you knew. You have to take pride in yourself. You got to learn your job and do your job. Do your job. Do your job. Hmm. I didn't sit back and wait on nobody to do nothing for me. Mm. Not nothing. Someone come. I know you want me. I want you. Excuse me. I had just like I say. I used to curse, but I don't curse. I said I don't want your stinky butt. Mm-hmm. I said it's a mess. Then mm-hmm. I knew how to take care of myself, and I take care of myself now. Well, seeing all that now, so what? What would your advice to uh, to to uh, to Corey Bush would be the new the new Congresswoman? What would your advice to her be? Cori Bush got to stay strong and she got to keep learning her job. She got to be able to social. Well, she already can associate or socialize with the public, but she got to find out what the world, where it stands, what they want and what they need and give something back. Mm. You cannot have all this information. You can't not know everything without opening your fist and giving stuff back. Mm. And that's a secret. Those laws been written down for us long before we came in the world. They've been already. We got a guideline, but do we use it? Mm. God told us that. And he give to thy brothers and sisters, and be kind. That's the secret of life. That is the I think I learned that long time ago. Being who you are, give a little bit. Don't steal. Don't take from nobody, but share. Mm-hmm. It'll come to you if you share, if you follow the, yeah. that guideline. Thank you, Ms. Euler. As usual, you what we call, I'm going to use one of the big words again, you what we call profound. Shoot. <laughs>